Hey, I'm Dina. I'm Nikki. And we're your hosts for CBD MagCast. CBD MagCast is devoted to the legalization of cannabis and its impact in your community. Cannabis Concierge, the expert and discreet service of cannabis procurement for the individual or retailer. These buds are for you. CBD MagCast Civics brings you business bragging, all about commerce in the cannabis industry. Welcome, John. We're very glad to have you today. We are so interested in interviewing you because you have a non-I-502 business that supports 502. Canavan delivers cannabis. Would you please let us in a little bit on who you are, what you do, and how you came about being Canavan? Sure. So currently, well, I take every role. I'm the owner, I'm the founder, I'm the delivery driver, bookkeeper, secretary, and let's say janitor. Um, and so I started deliberating those roles to other people as we become busier. I started this business because my best buddy owns a retail store here in Spokane Valley. And at the time, I was in logistics for FedEx. And he said, well, why don't you be the FedEx for weed? So I thought about it a little bit and said, okay, I'll, I'll quit my cushy job here for a corporation and see how this goes. So far, so good. It's been a little bit harder than I imagined, but with you know, in my opinion, without hard work, you can't really get anywhere. For sure. Why don't you explain to us what it is that surprised you about how much more difficult it is than you expected? That's a great segue into all of this. Well, the difficulties that I've come across is really the lack of knowledge from everyone in the state. Me yes. coming into this business, it's brand new and everyone's trying to figure everything out, especially for a transport company, which has never been done before. So I had a lot of questions and there was a lot of hiccups during the initial application process that no one could answer. Not the LCB, not the my friends that are already in the industry. So it was a real big learning curve and a lot of hard work, a lot of digging into the internet, just trying to figure it out really. Yes, and you know what I find interesting about that is you're not the only one that says the biggest challenge that they're facing is the LCB. It is foraging a new trail, so it's very exciting, and there's always the challenges of that aspect. Who sure. did you work with besides just the LCB? Yes, so I was turned away by, well, dang near everyone. A lot of people still aren't aware that there is a third-party transportation service available and trying to explain that to the people that run the state or the people that are in the higher-ups of the banking industry or deputy district attorney for the city that I live in has been very difficult and they believe that I'm a distribution company similar to Costco and not just a transportation company that goes and picks up product from point A and delivers it to point B. I find that oddly surprising considering the fact that they're the ones that write the law and not only that they specifically set up a transportation license but not a distribution license very very specifically you and i actually spoke about that when we connected initially precisely yes i mean even during both of my building inspections a i have to have a building for what reason i really don't know because the product has to stay in the vans at all time now during my initial inspections i was pretty excited to meet my lcb officer and ask them a bunch of questions that i hadn't got answers to and their first question to me was what what do I inspect here? <laughs> exactly. Said, yeah, that's so interesting. <laughs> you wrote the law. Why don't you tell me? So I spent X amount of dollars setting up cameras, security systems, vault doors, secure access doors, and then they tell me I don't need any of that. And I tried for that transportation license and went through the process to see what it was like, and I was just a little bit too close to a school. What frustrated me was the fact that, again, I could leave the cannabis in the van across from a school, but I couldn't have the paperwork, which is the only thing that they needed to have in that lock secure place was for the LCB to come and be able to look at your records. That could not be across the street from a school, but all of the product in my van could be, and they were very clear to say, yes, that's exactly true. Absolutely. And that's that's one of the biggest struggles. Well, one of the biggest struggles with this is, and I wrote a dissertation to the state about a year ago trying to extend this delivery window because we have 48 hours to get product delivered. The problem is most stores only accept product from on average, I would say 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So we have a total of 12 hours to get. In any week, we're doing between 250 and 500 deliveries. So it's a very hard delivery window to make, especially when you're working with retailers that take 
just a little bit of time to count. Some may take an hour or two hours to count. It's a bit of a process to try to navigate and schedule all these deliveries when we're in such a time crunch. Now, if the state was allotted us more time, we'd be able to provide cheaper prices and be able to, essentially the goal is to deliver four, five, six deliveries all to the same store at once. But we can't do that because of the short delivery window. And usually we either pick up the day of and deliver it or like Monday, for example, and deliver it Tuesday. So we just cut ourselves 24 hours right there because it's not worth us for us just to drive over there with one farm. You know, similar to the idea and business model of FedEx, one box in the back of the FedEx truck doesn't make FedEx any money. What is your capability of being able to get write-offs and do the natural business course that other people can do when it comes to your taxes and your end and reinvesting your money? How has that been, even though you're not actually in I-502? Most people believe we are directly related to 502, but the state considers us ancillary. So with that, it was really a process trying to find an accountant and um, you know someone to do the legal paperwork that also see the same way that I do, which is we are indirectly, is what I like to use, indirectly related to the industry. So I asked probably 20 different attorneys, 20 different accountants what they thought. Half of them said, save 95% of your gross sales, you won't make any money. And the other half said, you know, just write everything off as a standard business because you don't have to just deliver cannabis products. You can deliver anything that you want. So it was a bit of a struggle trying to find a CPA that agrees on my end and is willing to put their name on the line in terms of federally legal mumbo-jumbo. So there's no law against you delivering both of those products, even though one can only be consumed by somebody 21 and over, and one can be consumed by anybody. Correct. As far as I know, that's not anywhere written in the law, and the majority of the laws for transportation are very greatly written. So I do my best to make the better judgment. I don't try to slip under the law or do anything. I want to stay as far out of the way of the IRS that I can. But until they pass laws that tell me yes or no, then I don't see why we can't pick up a shipment of bicycles from DHL in Seattle and bring them over to Spokane and there just so happens to be cannabis in the van too. So, so long as I have the manifest that matches the cannabis, I reckon that I'm doing perfectly legal business. I think that's fantastic though because that does give you some opportunities that's a little bit better than some of the struggles that you're with. My partner in this industry, um, he also owns a transportation company and he does um, lab samples from hospital to hospital. Mm. And so we're trying to dig into that a little bit more because this market is it's a hard market to tap and a lot of it is trust and a lot of it is really just getting your name out there like i said previously a lot of people don't even realize that this service is available i'm excited to tell people about you and i think canavan is a fantastic name it's really fun i think you have a great background that'll allow you to be sustained i do know having worked with processors there's a lot of cost involved too the other thing that's interesting we have a lot of growers in spokane so getting it over from eastern washington to western and vice versa i know is also a struggle the position you're in and creating the foundation you really will i think explode when the things open up a little bit and people realize that they can afford to do it absolutely and one of the things i like to highlight about transportation and i hope everyone in this industry including my direct competition does well is that you know this industry is very family oriented with one thing is uh, someone hears this and i've yet to hear any bad news or bad appearances with canavan in any retail store or any producer processor and i think some of these other companies kind of got into this industry thinking the transport side would be easier and and a, and a lot more forgiving than the producer processor retail side and so i think a lot of people in this industry got into this with no business experience at all so it has really put a bad taste in some producer processors mouths that well this is the way the transportation companies are going and i would like to it'd be nice to be able to expand out to those types of people and let them know and say hey there's you know there's alternatives to transportation our, th our three main things are professionalism customer service and communication we are by far the best communicators we call every store ahead of time you know any problems that arise we call everyone and our attrition rate is nearly 99 percent out of the 60 two producer processors we worked with last year we still work with 60 of them that's great that's awesome yes so it's a, it's a good feeling to have the knowledge in the industry and really what it comes down to is just it's just customer service i think
think a lot of people jumped into the transportation thinking it would be myself included just like fedex you go there you drop it off you collect the payment you leave it's not that at all it's you go there you wait they do inventory which can take five minutes to i've waited all the way up to four hours for I believe one it. delivery to be yeah. done i believe it customer service and you know retention rate really go hand in hand though in most businesses it is interesting to note that the transportation industry you know from afar it does look like it may be easier but you're right especially in this industry every person who's got cannabis in their hands in a cannabis store you know someone delivering someone there is looking for information from them absolutely i feel like a lot of businesses didn't take into account the amount that it actually costs to transport product let's say from spokane to seattle or vice versa which is our main route because no one wants to make that beautiful drive through <laughs> ellensburg and ritzville right <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. With our pricing, you know, our, our basic cost from Spokane to Seattle is $100 for one delivery. When I try to explain that to some people, I, I feel like people don't understand exactly how much it's costing them. And to believe that you can do it cheaper is, it's not correct. <laughs> it costs you a lot more money. And I think a lot of the people that I've talked to is, you know, how much is that person who's driving that product from Spokane to Seattle, how much are they worth back at the facility? Are they trimming an ounce an hour, two ounces an hour? You know, I'm, certainly I would imagine that they're worth more to the company doing the actual work of the company than driving the product to the store. And not only that, you also have to think about the insurance, the liability, how much it takes just to set up getting your product into that car, even if you have a salesperson doing it, who should, as you say, be off actually selling as opposed to delivering. You know, with the transportation costs, I believe that some people kind of scoot by because the costs for insur insurance alone was hard, so hard to find. And I pay upwards of $600 a month per van <sighs> for insurance, just auto. That's not product liability. That's not cash liability. Let's see here. June insurance bill is $4,711.60. So that covers six vehicles, and that covers just just the vehicle. It doesn't cover anything inside the vehicle as far as product or cash. It covers, I guess, just your standard insurance on your vehicle. Now, were you yes. able to find anybody that would cover the cost of that product? Initially, I had a Form C, which is basically a standard addition to any insurance policy that is 25000 cash, 25000 cargo. That was revoked about three months ago. So I placed, oh gosh, probably 50 calls to 50 different cannabis insurance agencies, all of which who said they will not cover any product or cash. Now, I just found one. The, the, I think I'm their very first customer from Canisher. I found a $100,000 cargo insurance policy, which is huge. It makes everyone feel way more at ease. So if anything happens, their product, a fire, a car wreck, a uh, robbery, any of that nature, it's covered because uh, generally we don't have $100,000 worth of product in the van. So it's way over what we need, but I feel like it puts the farm at ease because it's, it's a big thing to trust someone with, you know, you got $40,000 that will either make or break you. And if this guy gets robbed, you go under. That's right. You don't have the ability to really mark your vans. You can't go into a vehicle wrap and advertise yourself driving down the road. Oh, absolutely not. To highlight that, I wouldn't do that anyway. Because right. there, there's been one robbery, armed robbery, at a transport company that I've heard about. And that was in Boulder, Colorado. John, how many people do you have in your company now? Uh, we have seven employees, including myself and my six drivers. And they just drive? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I have a partner over in Seattle, and he does a little bit of sales, and he does a little bit of driving. Well, I guess we all kind of drive, mm -hmm. and we're getting ready to hire two more people, one over in Olympia and another one here in Spokane. And where's your main location? You know, you said you had to have a building. Yes, so my main location is in Spokane. Again, the location was hard, very hard to find because it had to be in a zoned area. 
and everyone, because this industry is three years old by the time they allowed transportation, is that they know how much they can charge to cannabis industry people, people. for rent. So, yep. you know, I pay $25,000 a year to go check my mail. You know, that is one of the things that would be really great to lobby. There are a lot of organizations out there that have special interests that they are pushing an agenda for, the retail group, the grower group who wants vertical integration, this and that. I would really like just to have good business practice that makes sense, especially for people who are on the outside of the 502 that aren't physically selling a product you want to be purchased by somebody above a certain age. At this point, like you say, if you can bring in bicycles, then you shouldn't have to be swinging the other way so difficultly. Absolutely. And now we primarily stuck to cannabis. It's We're starting to branch out. I mean, if we have the vans... Why not do it? Because an right. empty van, any empty van is losing money. So essentially the goal is to go to Seattle with a full van and come back with a full van. And you never know what that may look like. There's an awful lot of people who just need something simple like that to get a piece of furniture transported. Your affordability, your... Yes, you absolutely. Know, now, one of the things we run into a lot is the size. So basically, we're in the process of developing an application that is similar to an airline seating chart. You're essentially buying spots in the van. Now, one of the problems we run into is people don't tell us how big their delivery is. So I will give them a quote of $100 and I get there and it's, I I need a semi truck. So there's a lot of miscommunications and a lot of people don't understand that I'm, I'm not just delivering this one delivery to Seattle for one person or I wouldn't make any money. We have to bring, you know, on average, I would say we have seven to 10 farms on any given van all at once. That's super cool, though. I think that's really neat because your drivers do get a chance to know the farms. They do get a chance to know the stores, and they are the front lines, even if they don't work for that producer. That's right. And, you know, we do a sample canvassing program. So what I do is usually on Fridays, I have my list of wherever we're going. That could be 40 to 150 stores. So, you know, on a weekly basis, I would say we see about 80 percent of the stores in the state. And what we do is I send that list out to people. So if they want samples going basically all over the state, we can get them there at a very, very affordable cost. Because if we already have a delivery going there, I like to return those savings to that vendor, get that sample over there, and hopefully generate an account for them, which generates a delivery for us. That's so beautiful. That is so community business. It's just like your professional hurry. Absolutely. And it is, it is, it's a fun program. You know, I would say if I had to guess off the top of my head, I would say we've got probably 40 different producer processors in over 250 stores. So it's it's nice for them because, A, it gives us a little bit more money. What I do, it's, it's $20. If you want a sample, let's say I got a delivery to Greenside Rec in Des Moines. You know, I'll let these vendors know who are always wanting to sample Canvas. Hey, I'm going to Greenside Rec, 20 bucks. Give me your sample. I'll take it to them. Now, the LCB has told us we are not allowed to pitch these producer processors to the store, which I believe is absolutely asinine, sort of not asinine. allowing us to basically <laughs> give them information about that farm, because when we drop off samples, we like to be educated on that farm, you know, how they grow, how they trim, nutrients, all that fun stuff, and the fact that we can't essentially, quote unquote, deliver that message is kind of redundant, because... That's the whole reason, you know, these retail stores are so busy and they see so many samples that I feel like they like third-party transporters to drop these samples off because when I drop samples off, I make sure that they have a good presentation. They have their, I would say the three P's, product, pricing, packaging. If it's all good, then there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to get into that store. The whole idea of being in the cannabis industry, everyone thinks, oh my God, you're a millionaire. You you must have so much money. It's not the case at all you know we're just any standard business trying to make our basically trying to pioneer an entire new industry and i always compare it to alcohol you know that started here there's always going to be the big guys like budweiser and coors light and then your small microbrew people but they don't allow it they don't allow us enough access into the market without getting in trouble to promote this or promote that and you know really do a good sense of business when we're literally the first people to ever do it and not only that they have no problem taking all your money 
I mean, that's the thing that's the, really annoying about it is that they tax the heck out of you and then sit around and make all these postured decisions when that strangles you from being able to give them more money. Again, it just, they cut off their nose to spite their face in, in setting up these laws. And then we hear, oh, well, we're working closely with them and they're taking into consideration things we say. And then we have conversations where I'm not sure that's the truth. Exactly. And, you know, the, that's what's really difficult about the LCB. I think the LCB needs more staff. They're severely understaffed, which I don't think is allowing them to do their job now or do their job as as well. Now, I don't ever run into the LCB. The LCB, you know, if, if they have a question for me, I'm more than happy to work with them and answer. But really, the only thing they're after for me is, hey, make sure that the product in your van matches your manifest. And that is super important. That's about it. Yeah. And, and, I have to say that is super important. You want to make sure that that product matches. You don't want anybody stealing from you anyway, so you have to do it for your own success and sustainability. But that is a product that is for somebody over 21, and we do want to make sure that it stays safe. And I also don't want to come across like I'm an LCB hater. I'm just very disillusioned with the idea, with the whole process because they had such potential to do it right and to make good decisions about it and to lead that. Right. I think it takes a certain group. You know, it would be nice. I know there's the Cannabis Alliance and, and a lot of other groups out there that lobby to change laws or or have good input on these laws. And I feel like none of them really ever change when I, I think these laws got put in place without even thinking about exactly how people operate in this industry. You know, with the, with the time crunch, like why is there a – I get why there's a delivery window. But is the LCB there every single time to make sure that I'm there on time? No. Right. One of the big problems we're running into right now is, and I get it, and it's full transparency for these stores is, you know, they want time deliveries. So Uncle Ike's is a time delivery. You know, they select a time slot for you to come and deliver. And I believe that a lot of these people don't understand that, hey, I can't. You know, when I'm driving from Spokane to Seattle and I got a 10 a.m. appointment, I can't make that. I mean, as so long as everything goes perfectly smooth, which it never does, <laughs> then we'd be able to make these times. Again, I always compare my model to FedEx is they give you a delivery day. Now, I can give you a delivery day. I can't get, give you a delivery time because the person that I just dropped off to, that's uh, five minutes to 45 minutes for the for the inventory. And the next person might be an hour. In order to make any money in this industry, obviously, it's the amount of deliveries that we can do in a day, but they're making it more difficult by trying to schedule certain times for us to be there. One thing that, as a company, really pride ourselves in communication, so we don't exactly have to follow, and I should say this for basically every, uh, I'd say there's about five different retail stores that do this time deliveries. They don't make us schedule the time because they always know when we're coming, if there's a hiccup, you know, we can generally give them about an hour window and then communicate with them if anything happens, which it always does. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a wreck, the pass is closed, got a flat tire, this, that, I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it's yeah. really the rapport that we've built with the stores. And, you know, we've had a lot of retailers really canvas for us because we, I like to think we operate in a totally different way than the other transport companies. And... We communicate, we're always calling, you know, if there's problems, not always, but when the problem arises with the delivery, say it's short or it's miscounted or this or that, you know, our first call before we leave is to that producer processor so they can try to figure out that dilemma because our goal is to deliver product, not take it back. Right, drop it and off, I, not bring it back. I think that's where we really shine is where... I always answer my phone. Every email goes, if it hasn't been answered in 20, 30 minutes, I'm either out of service or the phone's in the lake or something <laughs> terrible happened to me. So we really pride ourselves in how we communicate with the industry. That's super great and something that the industry, I think, needs more of internally and business to business is just open lines of communication and an expectation of that too. So we definitely are super happy to hear that you guys pride yourself on that aspect. I think you yes. set a shining and, example. And I think that's what's kind of missing in this industry is 
I think that there, I get that there's a lot of first time business owners and everyone's learning myself included. This is my second business. So I have a little bit of knowledge about business, but I'm still learning more and more every day. We deliver all of my employees. We all wear collared shirts. They're embroidered with our name. We wear either nice slacks or pants. You know, we want to deliver in a professional manner. You know, there's a stigma about cannabis industry and hey, what's up, bro? I'm, I'm here to uh, deliver this weed and it's, Everything that we have is organized, it's in boxes, it's labeled, it's a piece of cake. Nothing is ever unorganized. Paperwork's always in a folder with the name of the store, the name of the producer, so it can be relayed to my drivers. You know, okay, hey, stop one right here. It's it's on your folder. Stop two is right behind it. And so we keep everything very organized so it's a smooth process throughout the whole day. And I guess that's why you're up at 3 in the morning and go to bed at midnight is because you're the one that does all that scheduling, right? That is correct. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, I'm a workaholic. I, I love to work. I've always been that way. I came from a job, you know, at FedEx where I work 12 to 16 hours a day. So it's kind of natural for me. And I'm a bit of a, a spaz, I suppose. <laughs> if I'm not working, then I'm losing my mind. Because I have to be doing something at all times. So as much as it gets overwhelming, I enjoy doing it all. And I'm stubborn. Just like my father, I, I like everything I like to be done my way because I know it's going to get done right. So if you want something done right, you have to do it yourself. Exactly. <laughs> That's so, my motto. It's, <laughs> it's exactly. Right. And it's been hard. I've been trying. There's a couple employees of mine that are due for the training of what I do. It would be nice to have a little break from all of this computer time and you know it's, it gets really hard when I do deliveries because my phone is going off in the middle of a delivery or while I'm driving and answering emails and constantly pulling over to just look at my phone because I believe in great communication. I know that there's some people in the industry who've seen a great awesome boom their business went from zero to millions of dollars and they're living the good life you know and then my buddy included is, you know, he hangs out in his robe at home, casually goes into work, and, you know, good for him. He worked hard for it. He got it sooner than I'm sure he imagined, but I'm all for the hard work, and someday hopefully it'll pay off. And then there are those of us, even if we got all of that, we're still going to do all the hard work and something else, so. <laughs> exactly. Because we yeah. just don't stop. Exactly. You gotta work hard for what you want. You can't just, you know, everyone has the same story. They they worked hard. They put their all into the product. And I feel like that's kind of what sets people apart from the people who will last in this industry is that when things get tough, they're gonna get tougher. <laughs> and you gotta be able to kind of break through the ice there and just keep going. And if you get turned away from this store or that store, or I work a lot of custom delivery schedules for people or discounts and you know, we get to see all the different farms. We probably see more producer processors and more retailers than anyone in the state, and everyone is different in their own way. And, you know, it's fun to watch people really grow. But with growing, there's a lot of there's a lot of growing pains involved. We have a segment we do called Perilous Production, and that's specifically for those growers. So if you've got folks you'd like us to highlight, we would love to talk to them because we know how hard it is. Yeah, absolutely. So I actually started this. So my buddy who owns the store was the one who gave me the idea. And, and we couldn't find any information on transportation. We tried everything. I called the state. I, I didn't even know who I was calling. And they didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> and so it was really difficult. Luckily, my start in the industry, I feel like I better advantage because my best friend owns a store. And another one of my good buddies who we grew up with owns a farm. So we have the, and the Spokane newspaper did a little article on us and called us the trifecta. Yeah. The producer processor, the retail store, and the transport company, all good buddies. That's and awesome. those are the guys who really helped me get this all started, helped me do this, helped me do that. You know, my first delivery was from my childhood <laughs> buddy's farm to my childhood buddy's store. What a dream. It was really cool to get that in with the industry and you know obviously they promote us and so it's helped to have those kind of contacts in the industry 
For sure. And that's what we're about to here at CBD MAGCAST. We're all about the legalization of cannabis and the impact in our listeners' community. So having you be able to tell us such a beautiful story to start it out with and share the struggles that you've had, offer us the enjoyment of all the hard work that it takes to do this business and share the word about you. We're excited about that. And we're just delighted that you chose to be on our very first MAGCAST. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, I appreciate the opportunity. I I listen to a lot of podcasts with all the driving that I do, but can't say I've ever been on one. Cool. Well, we are definitely happy to have you and and super excited to share some insight into your business and the many businesses that exist close to I-502 and legal cannabis. John with Canavan. Thank you. CBD Magcast and Cannabis Concierge are a division of Confidential Monkey Enterprises. Visit us at www.cannabisbeyonddope.com.